Elon Musk could go down as one of the most important people in American history, and it all has to do with the 2024 election. We all just saw the feedback, the buildup, the leading up to Elon Musk and Donald Trump's X Spaces interview, which is what we're gonna go over today. But first, Trump is back on X, which is incredible, but I think has some very dark undertones. My opinion is that the media has done a very good job of isolating Kamala Harris from Biden. And the fact that the media, ha media has been able to do that kind of forced Trump's hand. Trump traditionally was just going to stay on True Social. I know he has some contracts with the SEC essentially saying that according to his fiduciary responsibilities, he has to be careful what he posts and how he posts on other social media platforms. But this election has now become so tight and so critically important. And with Kamala's boost in the polls, at least so they say, Trump, I think, was forced to get back on X because frankly, it is one of the best ways to reach the largest audience and get as much media attention as possible. As much as Donald Trump loves True Social, and True Social is a good vehicle for him to get campaign cash, he had to go back on X. So I wanna to touch on just briefly, if you notice the media has done a very good job essentially not talking about Biden who is currently kind of in power although we haven't seen him do anything except sit at the beach recently and separating Biden from Kamala who is supposed to be in power as well but if you notice she's only on the campaign trail she's not making any decisions she's pretty much on her own acting as an independent candidate running on a new track record, although she hasn't really announced any big policies, not that she needs to. We've seen her policies play out over the past four years, but the media has been running cover guard for her and her story so effectively that I think it forced Trump's hand to get back on X. And I think Elon saw that as well. Elon is a pivotal character that has gotten tons of hate from the media for a variety of reasons. One, X is a media platform. It is the modern town square. That is absolutely true but one thing that you need to remember is that's what the media hates look at tucker carlson tucker carlson leaves fox news where he's getting maybe a million views a night if even now he publishes his videos on x and they get millions over tens of millions of views on x normal media traditional media is dying elon musk is quickening their death so obviously they're gonna hate him but they also hate that he stands for freedom of speech if you look at any of the hit pieces on elon musk they're always saying we don't like Elon because he's promoting his version of freedom of speech. And his version of freedom of speech that they hate is, well, just any kind of speech. They obviously want the American people censored and they want Donald Trump censored. And I believe we even saw that before the X interview. You had the European Union, which was very odd, stating how they're gonna go after Elon Musk over the Trump interview, which the EU is essentially just, in my opinion, an arm of the US global order. So just very odd for a government institution to not want a private business to interview one of the leading, if not the leading presidential candidate in the United States. So there's obviously a big behind the scenes issue going on with the mainstream media complex, the institutions that be, and this Elon Musk, Donald Trump interview. That's the backdrop. You have Trump who needs to regain momentum because Kamala's artificial momentum has actually done quite well, at least in the human psyche. And from this day, people are gonna start voting in only a month in some states. So really, even though people think, oh, the election's in November, the election really starts in a month with early voting. So momentum now is all that matters. But here are the key takeaways. Elon Musk and Trump's conversation, I thought, went very well. Of course, there were delays at the beginning. I do believe Elon in that there was a DDoS attack. Essentially, a DDoS attack, for those who don't know, is when multiple fake user accounts try to spam logging on into accounts or onto servers to overwhelm the server to where it can't function anymore. I'd have no doubt that either certain entities within the United States or certain foreign entities planned a DDoS attack to essentially hopefully make it so that Trump could not be interviewed by Elon at all. But fortunately, in about 40 minutes, Elon was able to avoid that scenario completely. And we got our interview with Donald Trump, which was very humanizing. And that's one of the things that the media hates. They hate to humanize Trump. They always try to dehumanize him. All these publicity 
quality interviews with Logan and Jake Paul, with Aiden Ross, with Elon Musk, makes Trump very human. And if you want someone to lose, you have to make them look inhuman. You have to paint them as a caricature. But right now, Trump's done a great job looking as human as possible. Meanwhile, Kamala, on the other hand, with her Kamala cackle, really kind of looks like a very odd caricature. Now, suffice to say though, Trump had to get back on X because the humanization of him still hasn't boosted his momentum, probably like his campaigns wanted to see. But Elon Musk did a good job of essentially asking Trump all the major questions that I think a majority of Americans talk about. Of course, what was interesting about the interview was when Trump was talking about his a potential assassination attempt, he really didn't blame the Secret Service like I thought he would. It's very odd because your average Trump supporter thinks that the assassination attempt on uh, Trump's life was meant to kill him and was from inside government. But Trump never really went there. He never really pushed that narrative or that perspective. Even though Elon Musk hinted at it and kind of pushed at it a little bit, Trump never bought into it, which I find really interesting. And I'm not entirely sure why he's not going with that narrative. That tells me that there is something in Trump's ear saying whatever that narrative is, he has to stay away from it. I also do believe that there will probably be another attempt on his life. And I'm actually very scared about that scenario. But to keep things lighter, the conversation then moved moved into immigration, which was very fascinating because Elon made clear that a lot of the people who could be coming to America not legally could still be good people, right? And hardworking Americans, which obviously is very different rhetorically from what you normally hear from Trump. But he made the point that you can't tell who's coming and that's the big issue. So Elon still kind of kept his moderate frame while painting Trump in a stance of which him and Trump are still in the same circle, which is very well done by Elon Musk. You even saw that when he was talking about climate change and obviously talking about green energy and batteries and EVs. Elon Musk is very for green energy. He talked to Trump about how climate change is real. And obviously Trump being a big oil gas resource guy doesn't really care, doesn't really care at all. But it shows you that there's more dynamics to this current election in relationships like Elon Musk and Donald Trump than meets the eye. It shows you from a political perspective that alignment can often have more to do with personality than it does policy. But obviously Trump and Elon have to be aligned now because they are both public enemy number one by what you would call the deep state. The institutions that be hate that Elon Musk is giving people platforms for freedom of speech and they hate Trump for being the biggest threat to the establishment since, well, the previous Trump of 2015. So now where do we go from here? The big key for Trump is to keep up the momentum. Elon obviously has offered Kamala to do other spaces with him. I doubt she's gonna do that. Trump has offered Kamala three debates. She's only picked one. The other two are probably gonna be Trump town halls because she understands her best strategy is like Biden's. Stay out of the camera as much as possible. Be as generic as possible because Biden turned away Democratic voters. He was low energy and his talking and his stances on policy were just ineffective and didn't look good from a media perspective. However, Kamala, like I said, the media has separated her as a different entity, even though she's not, and has essentially said, we're going to keep your talking points to this silo. We're going to be very careful because we just need to get you through a month. If we can just get Kamala Harris to the beginning of October when early voting starts, then we have a winning strategy. And that will be their goal. It is not that long till the election season, guys. It is here. Early voting starts very soon. And there's a lot that has to happen in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Arizona, Nevada from Trump's momentum to not only stay, but to continue to build. So I think Elon Musk is going to be the most pivotal person in the 2024 election. I wouldn't be surprised if he has Trump on again. I'd actually think he'd be in more favor of doing that, especially as things heat up. I'm still waiting to see if Elon Musk becomes an official donor. He said he won't donate to either political party, but he's such in the Trump camp and such in the weeds that I think if cash really becomes a need for the Trump camp, Elon Musk would end up donating at the last minute. So we will see what happens. I think 
that Kamala's momentum can't stay forever. They have to keep showing her in the media. They have to eventually get out some policy proposals for her to make her look more substantive. Hopefully the Trump campaign is able to zero in, compare her to Biden, link her to Biden more. There needs to be more memetics, more videos of her and Biden in their track history together. They need to ensure that those two people are so closely tied that anytime you think of Kamala, you think of all the negatives of Kamala and you think of all the negatives of Biden. And that would be the most effective strategy to probably take her down. But we'll see. We still have two months till the official election. So we'll see what strategies they use.